Hey guys, okay, so this is going to be another episode of what I've been playing, and today I want to talk about two games in particular. They are The Darkness and The Darkness 2. So, yeah, I played The Darkness when it first came out back in 2007. Didn't like it that much because I found it was really difficult to navigate, got stuck a lot, and the game just kind of frustrated me, so I never really went back to it and I left it alone. However, recently, Sean Sidious has been starting a Let's Play, and I was watching that Let's Play, and it really got me interested in the game again, and Sean was saying to me how good it was, and how I should really give it another shot, and so I thought about it, and I was like, well, if I can get a copy cheap, I will. However, I tried to look at the buy now, it wasn't cheap at all, people are charging too much for it. It's not like mega expensive, it's just, you know, more than what I'd expect a game from 2007 to cost, but still, I kept trying, and I eventually got one on the cheap on auction, I want it for £4, so very happy with that. So yeah, so that inspired me to play the game, got the game. I then saw Simon UK put up a video recently, he just finished playing Darkness 1 and giving his impressions, which was really, really good and gave me you know, the emphasis to really go for it and try and get through the whole game and see how I get on with it. And so yeah, let me tell you what I think of the Darkness. Well, I'll start with the negatives first. The only real negatives for this game and this is a good sign of how good this game actually is. The negatives are, it doesn't have a sprint button, but then it was 2007, so I accept that. It's just a little frustrating because when you're trying to walk really slowly around areas and get from place to place, and there's a lot of to and fro in this game, so it is kind of frustrating. Uh, so there's no sprint button. There's a, a, very, a very much a lack of awareness. You can't figure out where you're supposed to go a lot of the time. There were so many times where I was just stuck, and I'd be like, oh, where do I go now? And... I'd be wandering around for like 10 minutes and suddenly I'd find a doorway and I'd be like, oh right, okay, that's where I'm supposed to go now. It wasn't a clear objective, which was kind of annoying. And the only other small problem I had was the aiming. And I know Simon UK mentioned this. He was playing on the Xbox 360 and he wasn't sure if there was a difference between the Xbox and the PlayStation in the aiming. And he had to use the aim assist. Now, aim assist is something I don't use because I hate it. I, like, I always think it's taking off the ability of the player, to be honest. I think it takes it out of your hands. But I found with this game I needed the aim assist because it's just too difficult to aim without it. And the aim assist doesn't make that much difference, but it just gives that a slight edge. But that was really the only negatives I can find. I mean, the game itself is fantastic. I thought the story was really well put together. You play Jackie Estacado, who's a mob enforcer, I suppose. And basically, you're working for this family. There's, you've got this darkness inside you, this demon, demonic force. And it's, the story is basically about how Jackie is trying to combat the darkness and come to grips with what it is, the dark, where the darkness came from, why it's inside of him, you know, how he's going to live with it, how he can destroy it. And on the other hand, he's got the mob trying to take him out, and the boss Paulie wants him dead because uh, he thinks Jackie crossed him on a deal, which he probably didn't. And then on the other side as well, you've also got the relationship between Jackie and his girlfriend Jenny, and he's got all his friends around him like Jimmy the Grape, Aunt Sarah, he's got Butcher, really really great defined characters and I thought the actual game itself, the story was excellently played out, the acting was spot on, the, the slight problem with the character models is that the mouths don't move that much but you know, this was 2007 so I've got to accept things like that I suppose, but I thought the acting was excellent, they did a really really good job of portraying the characters, each of the individual characters as satellite around Jackie were really well laid out and you actually got a sense of the characters and you felt like part of the world and you know you became involved with each of the characters and you, you started to care about them and the relationship between Jenny and Jack, Jackie was played out really well the actors did a fantastic job and I really like that in between the, the loading screens instead of saying a blank screen you get a, a, a video of Jackie and he's like sitting in a dark room with his guns and he'll just give you like little anecdotes every so often and it's really, really cool because it gives that extra background to the character and really draws you in. And I really like that a lot. Although I will say, near the end of the game, he did start repeating himself a bit and it got kind of annoying. Especially the crazy Abdul, because he tells that story like four times I heard that story. And the first time it was really funny, but after that, I kind of got grated on me a bit and I was like, all right, give it a rest now, Jackie. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's really interesting because I don't want to give any spoilers, but the game takes you to places you don't expect the game to take you to in the story. Uh, especially near the end, where it goes really strange. <laughs> it was a really odd, not what I was expecting it to do at all, and the place that it takes you to is interesting, to put it that way. 
I actually kind of like the way they depicted where you went to as well. It's really hard to talk about the game without giving spoilers, but even though it's 2012, I've only just played the game properly, so I'm sure there'll be other people that haven't played the game. I don't want to spoil it for you. But yeah, overall, I thought the story was excellent. I thought the characters were absolutely brilliant. Graphics were nice for the time. They did a good job on them. And I thought the actual the style of game is really good because it's a first-person shooter, but it's sort of got adventure elements, I suppose you could say, in that you know, you'll go to a person and they'll say, oh, yes, you need to go over there and do this, and you go over there and you do that, and you come back, and you, you're back and forth, and it's leading the story nice, and it's got a good pace to it. I did find sometimes it would be a bit frustrating because you come from one area to go on the train, go on the train, go to the next area, and you get to like the Lower East Side to do a mission. And you'd interact with somebody in between that while you're in the train station. And they'd be like, oh, can you do this for me? But they'd want you to go back where you just come from. So I'd be like, no, I can't be bothered. <laughs> I've got more important things to do. But yeah, I really, really liked the Darkness. I thought it was a great game. I thought, besides the slight frustrations with the getting lost quite a lot, which was really, really annoying, it was really fun. The gameplay was tight. The, the story is excellent. The characters are really, really well written, well acted, mature. I thought the guy that played Jackie Estacado did a fantastic job of really portraying this mobster who has got like a soft side with his girlfriend and you know he just wants to be with Jenny and you know enjoy life together but he's fighting this inner demon, this darkness and he just can't work out where it came from and why it's inside of him and how to deal with it and it was a really complex character and really he did a, a really subtle performance which I absolutely loved, I thought it was brilliant and as I say the loading screens as well when you get to see that extra bit of Jackie, all these extra little anecdotes and you actually get to find out about the person. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The only thing I will say is near the end of the game it becomes a bit too easy because you get too many power-ups with your darkness and you get this one power-up which is a black hole and you basically throw a black hole and it just sucks everybody into the black hole. So you get to a point near the end of the game where if you get a group of enemies come at you, you just whack a black hole, suck them all in and you just shoot the rest of them. It, it, Kind of a little bit of a down, they shouldn't have really used a black hole, I think that was a bit of a, a bad choice. But it depends how you look at the gameplay. For me, I didn't think it was a good idea because it makes it too simple. Some of us might not see it that way. But yeah, overall, I would say The Darkness is an absolutely brilliant game. Well worth a pick up and play. Just, you know, persist when you get stuck and you can't work out where to go because it's worth it. Because the way the story plans pans out is fantastic. And there's a moment in the game in particular involving Jenny and Paulie, which... It's just a testament to how good the acting is in the game. It really, really draws you in. And I had to actually physically look away from the TV. And I never do that with games. I, it's rare. I mean, Uncharted and Heavy Rain are probably the two games that have really caught me in terms of graphics and you know animation and acting and really pulling you into the story. But yeah, that moment in the darkness really did disturb me. It was quite grim. But it was exceptionally well played out. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant game. I definitely recommend playing it. So... I picked up The Darkness 2. Now, as you know, this only came out recently. Now, because I played Darkness 1 back in 2007, didn't like the game too much, when I heard Darkness 2 was coming out, wasn't really that bothered, and I was, wasn't really interested at all. And then I saw the demo on the PlayStation Network, so I thought, well, download the demo, try it out, you never know, it might be decent. Played the demo, loved the demo, I thought it was brilliant. The controls were spot on, the guns were great, the art style was beautiful. It looked like it was going to be a really, really good game. And so... I was waiting for it to drop in price and I managed to get it from shop2.net for £20 which is half price so bargain, you can't argue with that price at all. So what do I think of The Darkness 2? Where do I begin? I think as opposed to The Darkness I'm going to go the opposite with this one and I'm going to do positives first, negatives second. The reason being that positives of this game, ooh, let me see. Well, I love the art style, I thought the graphics were absolutely beautiful, the way the world looks, the characters are designed, everything looks stunning. The controls are really tight, the aiming spot on, I didn't need aim assist. Um, what else did I like about it? Um, yeah, it's really tough to find things that I liked about it. You can sprint. Um, you can get around a lot better than number one. It's a lot more clear as to where to go. Until the end where there was a bit where I come down this staircase into a room. And I spent a good 10 or 15 minutes just walking around this room going, what do I do? Where do I go? I couldn't find my way out and I was confused. And I had to go on the internet and find out. And it turns out that there's a photograph on a table and you just look at the photograph. 
and then the game progresses, which is just dumb. How are you supposed to like that? I, I don't know. That would just be a sheer coincidence. You just walk past and I think you'd come up and put, say, press the button to look at this fight. It's stupid. So yeah, I'm going to put it blatantly. This game is a pile of crap. This game is an absolute embarrassment to video games, an embarrassment to adults, intelligent human beings, to gamers. It's an absolute insult. And it isn't worth the disc it's printed on. It really isn't. It's a disgraceful game. And the reason I'm going to back this up now, and the reason I don't like this game, is quite simple. Number one, I don't believe that the developer who made this, because it's a different developer, it was Starbreeze that made the first one, and it was Digital Something that made this one. And I can't actually read it. But yeah, anyway, different developer, and they did not understand the game at all. They either didn't play the, Dark the Darkness, the original game, or they played it, and didn't understand what the game was about and where it was going. Or they just played it and didn't care and decided to make their own game. The Darkness 2 is generic beyond belief. The characters have no likability whatsoever. The script is appalling. It's unoriginal. I've seen it all before in a movie God knows how many times. It's just pathetic. The dialogue is just atrocious and the person who wrote the dialogue should be ashamed and should never be allowed to write dialogue for any games ever again because it's just absolutely beyond belief insulting to my intelligence basically and the gunplay I mean my god it's just terrible I mean the controls are great but the guns themselves it's Call of Duty it's generic shooter number one it really is it's just ground zero shite it's just terrible if you even get those Call of Duty military machine guns the ones with the square sight with the red dot in the middle. I mean, I was like, what the hell is going on with this game? It's ridiculous. Even when he runs, he runs like that, like proper Call of Duty style. And I was like, what the hell is going on? I, you know, oh, the game is just crap. It's just total rubbish. It really is. The story goes nowhere, as I say. It's just a really generic, stupid plot that I've seen a million times in loads of movies. Completely unoriginal. Doesn't really capture what the first game. To me, the first game is about the darkness within us all, like Simon UK said. It's about that inner demon, you know, controlling that demon and trying to understand, you know, how to live life without giving into it. Whereas I can't go into detail about spoiling the game, but that's not where they go with number two. They come up with a ridiculous plot line. The other problem I had is that in the first game, there's these things called the darklings. Now, in the first game, they're tactical. You can only select them at certain spots, and you have different darklings. You have a berserker darkling, who is somebody that a little gremlin dude. These are uh, darklings. The berserker will help you open gates, open doors, solve little minor puzzles where you get stuck. You have the gunner, which has a big machine gun strapped to its back, so you can use him tactically to assault several enemies. You have the kamikaze, which is you know, pretty self-explanatory. He basically just explodes in front of people. And you have the light one, which I, can't, I think it's a, a lightning or something it's called. And he can take down lights for you, so that because you can't use a darkness if you're in the light, you can only use it in the dark. Now, in the second game, you don't get none of that. You get one darkling, who for some reason they decided to make a sidekick, and I've got no idea why. This little twat follows you all through the game, wears a Union Jack shirt, which makes no sense. They don't even explain why he's wearing that, which I didn't get that at all. He's so irritating, he just repeats himself constantly. And it just annoyed the crap out of me. The only thing that was good about it is that you can use the darkness to grab the little shit and throw him up a wall and blow him up. You know, so I was quite happy about it because I was throwing him around a lot, but then he gets angry and starts repeating himself even more. It was just dumb. Really, really dumb. And there's just they just totally ruined They made it a generic shooter. It plays like Call of Duty. You, if you didn't have the darkness, you wouldn't know it was a darkness game. You've got the stupid little darkling, which is a psychic, which isn't supposed to be a psychic and shouldn't be a psychic. And it's bloody irritating and annoyed the shit out of me with your stupid dialogue. You know, the guns, as I say, you just, you know, it's Call of Duty standard guns, whoopee. The AI is just boring, it's just wave after wave of crap. The game's a bit too easy. You get stupid boss battles, which aren't difficult and completely pointless. You know, the dialogue is atrocious and just makes me want to just scream. It's just terrible. And the number one thing that I absolutely hate about this game, and it's the kind of thing that for me, you would see an MP or a celebrity, somebody who never plays games and hates games, someone like, is it Jack Thompson in America? He's the biggest twat. Would hold this up as an example of why video games are bad for society and bad for children 
and are rotting our brains and they're not art and they're not progressing and they would be right because you know it is an atrocious game but you listen to the dialogue and yes it's an 18 I understand that and I'm not a prude I don't swearing does not bother me in the slightest I watch plenty of movies and TV shows I play tons of games and when it's in context and when it's logical and it makes sense to use an F word that's fine by me but this game it's just oh it's just so adolescent and immature and childish and it's just like Every other word from every character, Jackie and all the surrounding characters, the Darkling included, have to use the F word every single other word, and it's just pathetic. And the worst thing of all, that really, really got under my skin, and was the little Darkling, because if you shoot him, he calls you the C word. Now that is completely out of line. There is no need for that at all in a game. It don't, it's just not appropriate. It's completely pathetic. And why throw that in there? It just shows the mentality of the people that developed this game. They just they should not be allowed to make games if that's what they think is entertainment. Because it's not. It's shit. Absolute shit. And I hate it. It really... I know this is turning to a rant. But it proper vexes me when people do stuff like that. Because there's no excuse for it at all. And it just I just thought, why? Why go there? You look at games like Uncharted... Heavy Rain, Alan Wake, you know, and the list goes on. The, the video games these days are mini movies and they're interactive movies. And they are at the level now where you have games like Uncharted, Heavy Rain, Alan Wake and several others. Where the story is that well written and well crafted. And the actors understand that this is not just a video game. This is an entertainment experience. And actually invest as much time and effort as they can in making these characters believable and interacting with each other and making a fantastic story that really absorbs the player and makes them want to carry on playing and enjoy the story and get involved with the characters and you know actually feel for the characters and then you get games like this piece of shit and they just go and absolutely trash all that and go back to old school and just don't really care and have no respect for the industry no respect for gamers no respect for adults or children or humans in general they just Absolute arseholes basically as well. So this game is atrocious. It really is diabolical. They paid more attention to the artwork and actually giving you some packaging. I mean, they actually give you a poster with this game, which is shocking. <laughs> but yeah, the game, the more attention gone into the packaging than the actual game. It's a disgrace. And it, I just cannot believe they got away with putting that out. And if I was at Starbreeze Studios and I saw that and they made that as a sequel to my game, I would not be a happy bunny. You know, I don't think that should be considered as anything to do with the Darkness whatsoever. It should be written out of the history of the Darkness because if they make any more games, that ugh, ugh, wrong, so wrong. If you're going to play the Darkness, you want to play this one. This is the great game. This is an excellent, intelligent, mature title, brilliant game. This is a pile of crap and should not be touched. I mean, obviously, if you've played that one, you'll want to play this to see yourself, and I would recommend giving it a try just to make your own decisions. Because I don't believe that everybody's going to agree with me, but I just absolutely hate this game. It's vile. And I would say, I would not buy this. I would go for £20, which I thought was a great price until I played it, obviously. Having played it, I would say, well, I don't even recommend you buying it, but if you're going to buy it, I wouldn't pay no more than no more than £10, $15. I don't, and that's really pushing it. I mean, I don't think it's worth that. I don't think it's worth the disc it's printed on, quite honestly. <laughs> but it's just, it's just a god awful game. The only good thing, I suppose, maybe, um, at the end of the game, you were given two options, two paths, and I chose one path, and that was a quick ending, over and done with, and then I thought, well, I'd like to see what the other one was, just out of interest, what the other ending might be, and the lucky thing is, when you're back to the menu screen, if you just click continue, it goes back to the last checkpoint, so you get the option again to pick the two, the two. so I chose the other option, and yeah, it wasn't that good, it was a pretty crap ending as well. <laughs> so I wasn't that bothered, I didn't miss nothing. So yeah, that's my opinions on the darkness and the darkness too. And just as an example of the, the, the fantastic intelligent dialogue that you get in the darkness too. One of the one of the things the enemies say when they're coming in towards you is I'm gonna club you like a baby seal. That's about as intelligent as it gets. It's just absolutely awful. Awful, awful game. I hated it. And this actually brings me back to The Conduit. It was the same situation with that, only that was made by the same studio, one and two apparently, which I don't understand how that happened. Maybe they were different teams. But I loved The Conduit, it was a brilliant game, like The Darkness, intelligent, well thought out, great script, fantastic acting, really fun to play through. 
and then the Darkness 2 is an atrocious generic shooter with shitty AI, terrible voice acting, crap controls, god awful game. So yeah, I mean, I know it's not going to be the last game that I play but that this happens with, but it's just depressing. It's so annoying when you get a game as good as this one and then they make a sequel with a different developer who has no clue what to do with it and absolutely ruins it. It's a real tragedy. So there you go guys, that's my opinions on The Darkness and The Darkness 2. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm sure I'll get a lot of comments on this one hopefully. Uh, I'm interested to hear what you guys think if you played both games. Which one did you prefer, which one you think is the better game, uh, what did you like, what did you not like. So yeah, let me know guys, and any video responses would be absolutely brilliant as well. So, thanks for watching guys, see you all again soon.